What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight! Tonight! Alright, we're going back to Bruce Springsteen. Yes, indeed, Bruce Springsteen fans, feeling you! Come on now! Here we go. This is a request from JFK, and this is actually one of JFK's three prioritized requests for the month of June for being a gold tier member on the Patreon page, so... Here you go, Jeff K. I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, Jeff K. wanted to see me react to this song by Bruce Springsteen. Uh, it is a cover of an In Excess song called Don't Change. Now, have I heard the song before? Full disclosure, yes. Yes, I have heard the song before. I've heard the original. I heard the original from In Excess. Um, I'm not totally familiar with the song, but I know for a fact I've heard it before. I'm sure when I start hearing this song, I, I'm sure I'm gonna recognize it. But, and here's where the here's where the uh, here's where the loophole comes into play. I have never heard or seen Bruce Springsteen perform the song live, or even cover it in general. So, to be clear, I am not gonna be reacting to, evaluating, or scoring the song itself in any way, shape, or form. I am only gonna be reacting to, evaluating, and scoring what Bruce Springsteen has done to the song, the cover that he did, his interpretation, as well as the live performance, talking about showmanship, stage interaction, stage interaction, uh, stage energy, crowd interaction, showmanship, uh, production. I'm talking about these things, okay? Not the song itself, so please keep that in mind. The original song, has nothing to do with this, okay? I think I made it pretty clear. Now, this was posted by Bruce Springsteen, okay? And the video has 974,172 views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the video description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What do you say, are you ready? Are you ready? Is here. We go. All right, here we go. Bruce Springsteen, In Excesses Don't Change. Live from Sydney. Uh, 19. So I'm guessing February 19th, 2014. I'm guessing. I don't know. All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four.
I don't recognize this. I, I thought I... I could have sworn I've heard this song before. This does not sound familiar. Okay, so that means one of two things is happening. One, I'm completely wrong. I've never heard the original song before. Which I could have sworn I have, but maybe I haven't. Or two, and this is probably more likely, they have changed the song so much, it doesn't sound anything like the original. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe I didn't hear the original. I could have sworn I have. Um, okay, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I haven't heard the song before. Um, it sounds good, though. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. It sounds really good. It's got a great, great tempo, great energy to it. Um, let's keep going. Let's see where this goes. Digging the feel on the song, man, more than anything else. I mean, the song itself is not a difficult song. It's a pretty simple song. It follows pretty much the same chordal structure um, throughout it, it, in all the parts. I mean, it, it is, there's, no, there's no key changing. There's no modulations. It, it's, it's following the, you know, it's, it's, it's not difficult. It, it's it's pretty simple to follow. Um, but it feels good, man. It really does. The groove on this is infectious. Um, digging the energy, digging the vibe. Uh, the horns, man. The horns just really just... I, I don't know why, man, but for some reason, when I hear horns playing with Bruce Springsteen, I just I dig on them. I don't know why that is. I mean, I, I, I don't know. It, 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 me being a bass player, you would think I'd be tuning into the bass. And don't get me wrong, I am. I, I, I do hear the bass. I do hear the guitars. I hear the piano. I hear the drums. I hear the percussion. And they all sound great. But for some reason, those horns. I, I just dig on them. I don't know why. I can't explain it. But I do. I, I really do. Um, let's keep going. I, I Is this weird? I kind of sworn I've heard this song before, but... I don't recognize it at all, <laughs> at all. So anyway, let, let's keep going here.
kicking the hi-hat now. Nice. Love his cues, man. He gives such great cues. Easy to follow. Even I knew it. He was gonna be. I, I knew he was gonna end. I was like, I can see it coming. He brought the guitar neck up, and boom, there it is. Nice. Um. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Um. Well done. I think I already have a score in mind. I think I do. I think I know the score I'm going to give already. I'll see you in the review, and uh, I'll give you the score, and we'll talk about it. Well, there you go, folks. That was Bruce Springsteen uh, with a live performance of the NXS Kong. NXS Kong, can I just say that? Try again. That's pitiful. I mean, it's absolutely pitiful to, to perform like that. That was Bruce Springsteen with a live rendition of the NXS song, Don't Change. This was a request from JFK. And this was actually one of JFK's three prioritized requests for the month of June for being a gold tier member on the Patreon page. So there you go, JFK. I hope you enjoyed the show, man. Um, okay. Before I give my score, um, I thought th this is a weird, this is a weird, but I don't think this has ever happened to me before. I thought for sure going into this that I was... I was, I wouldn't say familiar, but I, I, I thought I at least had heard the original song before enough times that I would recognize it. Well, I didn't recognize it. Honest to God, I, I thought I had heard enough that I'd be able to pull this out and go, okay, I, I, I reckon that song. Either I have never heard the song before, or I heard it maybe once or twice and I do not remember it. I thought I heard it more than that, but Obviously, I haven't because I didn't recognize any of that or or they changed it so much from the original that I didn't recognize it. Now, I don't know which one it is. I am going to take the side of I don't recognize it because I, I don't remember the song. I'm going to take it from that standpoint. I don't believe Bruce Springsteen would change a song so much that you don't recognize it. I don't believe that for one second, especially taking in consideration that when they started the song, you heard the crowd go crazy. So they knew it. They clearly knew it. So they recognized it. So that leads me to believe he didn't mutate it that much that it was unrecognizable. So I have a score here. Um, on a scale of one to 10, I'm gonna give that an 8.3. Yep, 8.3. I feel good about that score. Let me tell you why. Why? Okay, having not be able to recognize the song, I almost have to treat this like it's a fresh reaction, like I've never heard the song before, which I haven't, but even though it's a cover, I have to treat it like I've, I've this is my first exposure to the song as a whole. So... It's got a great feel, a great upbeat feel. It's a simple chordal structure, but like I've always said in the on this channel, simple can be effective when it's done properly. And this was definitely done properly. It wasn't so repetitive that it got boring. There were changes. There were part it, it the, the chorus, the verse sounded different. Um there were there were different there were different chordal lines in there, different chordal uh, patterns that they were following. It was always in the same key. They never changed key. They just followed different chordal patterns. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's that's very normal. Um, but I'm glad they did that. They didn't just keep it the same pattern throughout the entire song, like I know a lot of other bands have done in the past. And I, I hate it when that happens because then you have a hard time differentiating between where's the verse, where's the pre-chorus, where's the chorus. You don't know because the song sounds the exact same all the way through. Uh, the energy on the song, the feel on the song is what did it for me more than anything else. It feels upbeat. It feels positive. Um, 
it felt good, man. It felt, it, I, I feel better after hearing the song. I, I don't even know why. It, it just, it, it just gave me a very positive vibe. And I dug it. I absolutely dug it. Um, everybody, as far as the musicians on stage, everybody sounded like they were playing everything correctly. Um, nothing stuck out like a sore thumb. Nothing, nothing sounded like it didn't belong. Nothing sounded like it was wrong. So I can only assume that everybody was playing their parts right. Shocking. <laughs> Coming from, you know, Bruce Springsteen's band here. That, that's surprising, right? Yeah, right. Um, no, they all sounded good. It sounded full. But nothing stuck out. Like th there was never any voicing that stuck out like a sore thumb. There was never anything that sounded like it took over. Um, even the horns. And I, I, I mentioned the horns earlier. I dig the horns, man. I do. Um, whenever I hear Bruce Springsteen play uh, on this channel, every every video I've seen on the channel with him uh, performing, and he has the horns with him, man, those horns sound good. They really do. I dig it when the horns get the chance to shine. And they did a couple times in this, and they felt good. But they, but again, they never took it so far where they stole the show. You know what I mean? They, they never became the focus. Even when they were playing at their loudest, they were still in the back. You know what I mean? It, they never came to the forefront. And that's, that's, that's great musicianship right there. That's knowing your limits and knowing how loud you can go without crossing that line. And that's fantastic. I, I, I dug that. Uh, Bruce's vocals on this sounded very, very typical for Bruce Springsteen. It was a great job. Um, fit, the, fit the mood and tone and feel of the song, like a glove. The whole song just felt, I, I think if I could sum this whole song up in one word, I would say comfortable. The song just felt nice. It felt comfortable. It, it was like, it's like sitting in your favorite recliner or sitting in your on your favorite sofa or laying down in your favorite bed. It just feels familiar. It feels nice. It feels comfortable. And that really is what the song kind of felt to me. And it, it felt good. I enjoyed it. Um, I thought they did a great job uh, performing it live. Uh, a lot of great energy coming, especially from the four guitar players up at the front. Uh, including Tom Morello. Yeah, I saw him. Don't think I didn't see him. Of course I saw him. Uh, a lot of great energy coming from, from those four in particular. Um, they, they really did put on a good show. I, I dug it. So that's how we're coming to the 8.3. So 8.3, final score, I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hope that was something to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and bright your day, then I did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you guys feel like joining the fan base, go ahead and click on that button down there. If you guys want to like the video, go ahead and like the video. If you guys want to ring the bell, go ahead and ring the bell. It honestly doesn't make any difference at all to me, but if you guys feel like doing these things, then by all means, feel free to do so. Well, that's going to do it for tonight, folks. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous, and support each other. Later. Peace.